Today we're going to take a look at advanced shape files with RADMAP. As a reminder, RADMAP is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to take a quick look at implementing RADMAP as well as how we add shape files for display. And this is kind of a recap of the previous video showing the colorization, how we added the fill and highlight, all that good stuff. Then we're going to take a look at working with the data. This is a little bit more advanced and it's going to go a little deeper into code as well as the events of our shape reader. So you can definitely get an appreciation for what else you can do with your data besides just displaying it and making it look all nice and rad map. And we'll finish that all off with adding some custom elements to our rad map. So this is kind of an exercise in utilizing the data that we're working with. To start this whole process, we're back in Visual Studio, back into our rad map shape file project that we did for the last video. So a quick look through our XAML, we can see we have a rad map instance. We set a zoom level to seven as well as a minimum zoom level to seven. Maximum zoom level is two knocks up there, so we go up to nine. And the center is highlighting the center of where our data source is going to be, New Jersey. Back in the XAML, you can see our RADMAP provider is an empty provider since we're loading our data from our file. And we set our information layer with an information layer reader being a map shape reader. And it's going to use tooltip format name. And of course, this name is the county name. So as you hover over a different county, you will get that name being displayed. And last but certainly not least, of course, we have our shape fill, which is a light blue, and our highlight fill, which is an orange. So by default, the shape will show up with light blue as the color, but when you highlight over a county, it will turn to orange, and you'll see that tooltip. I know it's a whole lot to go over, but if you see the previous video, you'll see that explained in a lot more detail and over a lot greater period of time, so I encourage you to watch that one first. But stepping into our code behind, we can see really quickly on the loaded event, our shape reader source and data source are both being set. The source is being set to the shape file itself, so all the geographic data for where our shapes are going to be displayed and the data source is the data behind it. So all the data we can actually leverage and utilize for displaying something cool in our RADMAP instance. Now in order to make this all happen, we want to utilize some events off our shape reader. So we say x shape reader dot read completed. That seems to make a lot of good sense. And new event for this. And we can see we have the object center. We know this is coming from. But event args, what does this give us? Well, all we actually get from here is whether or not we have an error. So we can check to see if we're loading a file and something actually went wrong with that, but we actually have no access to what's going on within that file with our manipulation of it. So this is not really where we want to be just yet. So our recompleted event is good, but we need something else before that. And if you watch the IntelliSense, you'd see xshapereader.preview read completed. And this is going to give us a lot more information that we can utilize for doing something neat with our RAD map. You can see that by stepping into, scroll to the right, you can see event args, that's what we're going to use. So event args. And now we have an error, so you know, that's going to happen. Then we have items. And this items, you can see a list of framework element, but we know this is actually going to be something a little bit nicer, and that these are likely going to be map polygons. So we can go ahead and say, for each var poly in event args.items, and we can do a really quick check if it is map polygon. Do a quick namespace add for that. And then we can do something with it. So this is the exciting part. Now to make this really easy, we'll do something like debug, do a quick add that namespace, dot right line. And now we want to be able to grab some value from each item just to kind of prove that we went through it. So in this case, we'll do another poly as map polygon and here we can see the option to go into extended data. Extended data is what gives us access to the actual data that's behind this point. So here we see we have data as well as property set. But since this is really just kind of a key value collection, we're going to say get value and we want to use that familiar name. So the same thing we're using from the tooltip we want to use to kind of showcase that we can get values out of here. Do a quick run on this, and we're going to move Internet Explorer as soon as it shows up so we can see our output window instead. And looking at our output window, we're going to see when the map's displaying around that time. We just blasted through a whole host of counties. So everything that got loaded got displayed in our output window. So we know that our method is working, and that's a very important thing in any demo or scenario like that. Stepping back here, of course, displaying the name isn't anything too terribly exciting. So let's see what we can do to utilize some of this data to display elements on our map. Well, very quickly, we can get rid of this statement. And I'm going to need something to kind of save some information. So I'll step right up to the top here and say I want to have a public 
list of location. And location is going to be, as you can see, Telerik Windows Controls Map Location. So latitude and longitude. Call it locations. Is new list location. And now for each of these, I want to add a brand new location. And thankfully, you're not going to see me type too much code. I have a little bit of prefab in here. So we're getting a double latitude. is going to be convert to double. The same map poly as map polygon. The extended data. We're going to get value location.latitude. And we're also going to get location.longitude. With this, we simply want to add a new location to our locations collections. So locations.add new location. And we want to use the overload where we send in the lat and lon as latitude and longitude. So now we have a list of locations that we can do something with. Do a quick save. And now we can use this read completed. Because now for each location that we actually have here, we want to be able to do something with it. In our case, we can go ahead and add a custom element to our rad map. So we can very quickly say for each location, low in locations, we want to make a new map element. In this case, a map ellipse sounds like a good choice. We want to set really quick dot location equals low, our location that we got from the map polygon that was being created. And now we just need to set some display properties. So we say me.width equals 5, me.height equals 5, me.fill equals new solid color brush, and say colors.brown, nice fill color, me.stroke equals new solid color brush, colors got yellow, make this really stand out. And the last thing we need to do is actually add these to the information layer. So we can say in this case, x info dot items dot add me so just to recap or when we load all our data from a data source shapefile before we're finished with the read while we're still working with that data we're going to step through every single one ensure that it is a map polygon which we're 99 percent sure it will be then grab the latitude and longitude and add that to a locations collection now once we're actually finished with the read and we're all completed there we have our locations collection so for every one of these we want to add a new map ellipse to our map to highlight where we got this data and showcase it on the actual map itself. So a lot's going on, but we should be able to run this and see everything work very, very nicely in Internet Explorer. Here we go. We've loaded our state. We have this cool highlighting effect going on. And as we can see, we also got these custom map elements. So pretty cool stuff is going on. And we actually inherit, since we have that highlight color set in the information layer, we inherit that highlight when we go over one of these different points. So, neat little effect that you got out of the box without any extra effort. But of course, what you're looking at right now, all these dots are showing at the top and left most latitude and longitude point of the actual object. Because in order for it to display in a certain spot, it has that maximum and minimum latitude and longitude. So that's really not the ideal scenario. So let's see what we can do and make that a little bit nicer. As well as add some eventing so we can utilize these new events that we're working with to showcase some of our data. Now of course, again, to save you the joy of watching me type all this out, I have a little bit of copy and pasteable code to drop in here, where we're still getting the latitude and longitude, except this time we're grabbing the min and max latitude and longitude for each collection of points. You can see map polygon points, each collection of points collection within the polygon. So the points define the actual shape of the polygon, but they also give us a nice way of grabbing the maximum and minimum values since we don't have necessarily have the standard height and width being applied to these. Then we simply grab a latitude 2 and longitude 2, which is these points averaged. And if we set latitude 2 and longitude 2 to our new values, we're getting something a lot closer to the center of the county itself and not so much the top left point geographically. But of course, what good would this be if we can't add some extra information or something going on with our ellipse? Well, we can say me.tag equals our location dot latitude dot two string and ellipsis and then plus hello dot longitude dot two string. So we have some way to showcase that location that we actually picked for these points. And of course we can use an event. So we'll say mouse left button up plus equals this brand new event. And on this event we know the center is going to be a map ellipse as map ellipse dot tag dot two string 
of course we have that string we may as well do message box dot show send that whole value in now only we're using a slightly different latitude and longitude to determine where this map lift is going to go we want to respond to a mouse left button up event meaning that everywhere we put one of these custom elements we can have an event off of it and that event can take something from the data in this case I actually dropped values into the tag but remember tags are really really useful so you can actually drop full objects in them so even if you wanted to pass the full information you had for that map data point into the tag for some use you can do that with this whole setup so again we have our highlighting we have our name showing up for the tooltip and we have the highlighting going into these points for free and when I click on one we see that latitude and longitude that we calculated for that point displaying in our pop-up window so very cool stuff and all just extending off of those shape files that we're loading and the data that's already in the shape file so all the data that you need to do this is already sitting in the data that loads the actual map shapes all you have to know is how to utilize that within your application I hope you've had some fun learning some advanced techniques for working with shape files and with rad map stay tuned for more videos highlighting the features and functionality of the Telerik rad controls for silverlight and rad controls for wpf control suites for dotnet xaml development